You guys love tutorials on photographing and editing, and I love to travel. So I decided to combine the two for what I hope to be an ongoing series where I go outside of Kansas City to photograph amazing and unique properties. I'll document the process from the initial walkthrough to the final edit for several of the shots and post it right here on YouTube. For the initial trip, we headed out to Colorado and we'll start where a lot of photographers start when visiting a property for the first time, the initial walkthrough where we'll analyze different compositions and strategize on a specific shot list. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so because the tutorial videos will be coming out very soon. Okay, we're out at the Zen Tree House, which is a vacation rental in Bailey, Colorado. And the first thing we're gonna do is a walkthrough. We're gonna go room by room and just kind of walk you through the thought process of coming up with the specific compositions and just kind of, I'll basically be thinking out loud. So let's go on inside. So before we start getting into the composition aspect of it, let's just do a quick tour. Let's start on the one end of the house, which I believe is the north side. So let's go that way. So the first thing you'll notice is that the one side of the house, it's all windows, and that's gonna be a massive factor that is gonna come into play when um, coming up with the compositions. This, I think, technically is considered the secondary bedroom. Relative to the, to the other one, there's really not much of a difference. Size-wise, I think it's about the same, but the only big difference is this one has what looks like kind of a stove fireplace, whereas the other one, as you'll see, has an, an actual fireplace. We're not gonna be spending a whole lot of time in here as far as shots, because like I mentioned, the other one is basically a carbon copy. You'll notice that I'm out of breath. This is only the second day we're here, so I'm still getting used to the altitude difference. Yeah, nice bedroom here. We got a bathroom on this side, but the only difference here is just the size of the vanity. That's about it. This is a smaller bathroom. The other one has a double vanity. I don't think I'm gonna spend a lot of time photographing the bathrooms at all. Although they are cool, it's just not something Personally, I'm gonna to add to my portfolio. This is a cool part of the house, the hallway, as you'll see through um, from some of the exterior footage, is that this whole house is basically two bedrooms with a hallway and a, the living space kind of connecting them. And this is the living space. This is where we're gonna be spending a good chunk of our time. There is a lot here. So as you turn around, you notice we're definitely gonna be taking at least a couple photos of this, possibly three. We have the living area with a really cool fireplace, the dining area. Architecturally, the thing I feel I would be remiss not showing off is, is the beams. The beams are showcased throughout the whole entire house. So if I'm not shooting wide enough to get those, I, I'd be kind of a dummy. So I definitely have to show show that off. And clearly, another thing we would, we would be remiss not to show off is the view. But we'll get into more of the composition specifics as we go along. So let's go into the main bedroom. I might take back what I said before. I do think this is probably maybe five feet wider than the secondary one. But other than that, and the fireplace, yeah, it's almost a carbon copy. Again, the beams are showcased throughout. Um, we got the really, really cool view. I love how the whole side of the house is just windows. We are really gonna utilize the natural light. Uh, that's pretty much it. The bathroom's behind us here. Yeah, so very similar to the other one, but still as cool of a bathroom as it is, I don't need this one specific for my portfolio. So the last thing I wanna show you really has nothing to do with the interior of the house. We gotta go back outside. I'm gonna show you what they call the relaxation deck. Now this is the only way to get to this part. There's no way from the actual house itself. You gotta go back out to the driveway. And this is the relaxation deck. So over there is the jacuzzi, fire pit, and a sauna. We came down last night, spent time in the jacuzzi and just with the winter weather, it's pretty awesome. Where did these come from? <laughs> I'm gonna walk you through the process again. I'm just gonna be thinking out loud here. I might even correct myself or come up with more bright ideas, but we're gonna start with the, uh, the main bedroom and then we'll work our way through. For the main bedroom, I really narrowed it down to, to two shots and they're actually gonna be very similar in the end. One is a vertical and the other one is a, a horizontal of almost the same exact shot. So what I'm thinking is a shot from actually where that camera is about right now with it pretty close to this door here, doing a one point perspective this way. But as you can see, we're limited by this wall in this corner. So someone might think, well, if you wanted to get straight center of the fireplace, you could do something here. But as you can tell, if I do straight down the center and kind of use the fireplace as the center point, we run into a couple problems. This beam right here is right in our face. And then the other issue is these beams kind of go cut right down the middle of the fireplace. So that solidifies my original idea 
of getting the camera further back, but then getting it as close to this door as possible. So while we're setting up the shot, yeah, this the final the camera is going to be pretty close to the door here. And the other thing I want to make sure to do, try to get as much of the glass here, the sliding glass doors, without overdoing it. And I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. So first thing I need to figure out is how far back can I go without getting this door and kind of this corner in frame. And in order to do that, I'm going to just do a test shot shooting wide at 14 millimeters just to find out my point of reference because in the end, I'd love to start off doing this as a vertical at 24 millimeters. So if I come back here, do this shot, there you can see we're introducing this corner into the shot. But I think we're gonna be okay if I can show off maybe about two thirds of this pane and obviously a majority of um, this one right here. That's pretty close right there. Still, I think we're getting a lot of blank space that I don't necessarily need. And I think going 24 will kind of show off the intimacy of the room and just and still show off a lot of the features that I want. And that's pretty close. But thinking out loud, probably what I'm gonna end up doing is using my tilt shift without introducing um, some distortion that might come into play if you go too far on the tilt shift. That's the main bedroom. Let's go on to the living area. The one that I definitely want to do is probably what you might consider a wider than normal shot, but I would almost feel remiss not getting it which is kind of this hero shot of the living space and the dining area. And as much as I wanna show off these two spaces, the hero of this is definitely gonna be the view. The problem is right now, it's a little hazy and that's actually not haze, it's just because of the flurries and the snow that's coming down. The one thing I definitely do not want in the shot at all is the island and any of these chairs. And I'm trying to find that balance of having it as compressed as possible while still shooting wide and also not getting the island in the shot. So if I'm shooting at 14 millimeters on a full frame camera about right here. So if you see if I'm shooting right there, I'm definitely getting the island in the shot. And I don't want that. The challenge is now figuring out how far back can I go, physically moving the camera back, doing two things now, not getting the island in the shot. And also I don't wanna to get too much of the back of this couch. I don't wanna be staring at the broad side of that couch. So let's say I keep it at 14 millimeters and just get the island out of frame, and obviously we'll move the stools, but I get that, and that's at 14 millimeters, and I just, I don't want that. So now, what I'm gonna try to do is back up as much as I can, where the edge of this island is gonna be flirting with the top of the couch right here. And again, I'm thinking out loud, so I don't know how well that's gonna work. But if I come back here, even at 24 millimeters, yeah, actually I think 24 millimeters is gonna do the trick. It's a much cleaner looking photo and it's not as stretched and distorted as the 14 millimeter one was. Now what I might do when we're actually doing um, the shot on the tripod with the lighting and everything, I might see if we could get it close to 30, trying to get the camera back here as much as possible. My only fear though is the further back we go, this beam, as you'll notice, going perpendicular to the rest, starts to block the beams up there. And since we're keeping it 24, I might keep it at a on the tilt shift and then shift up a little bit to miss even more of the couch, but then to get more of the beams up top, so. Okay, let's move on to another shot. I really want to do some uh, nice vignettes showcasing the decor, but then also showcasing the view. And one that I'm pretty sure I wanna do is a vertical vignette showing off the dining space. We could probably do this more narrow than 24, because at 24 millimeters, this is what we get. I like the amount of beams that we're getting in there, but I think we could get a little bit tighter, show off a little bit more of the intimacy of the space shooting this at 35. So we'll try that when we're actually setting up the shot. So that's another one I wanna get. Definitely wanna do a hero shot of the kitchen, so come back this way. If you've seen any of my other videos when it comes to lighting, as much as I would love to get a one point perspective of this, you'll start to see some issues lighting wise. First and foremost, since this whole side of the house is just, we have a ton of natural light being blasted. If I shoot from this direction, that lighting kind of flattens everything out. We're not getting a whole lot of depth and dimension. You might be perfectly fine with that. And I'll do a version where we just take the same exact shot with the lighting as is. But what I'm thinking is try to utilize as much of the light coming from this side of the house 
over to this direction. And thank goodness, most of the windows here on this side of the house are motorized. So we can shut these and uh, close the blinds. And so what we're going to be doing is utilizing and really probably overemphasizing the natural light coming from this window and that one. And if it's not enough, I do have my flash and gigantic umbrella will embellish it a little bit too. So that's my thought on that one. We'll try it both ways. We'll try it on natural light with this light, and then we'll try it kind of faking, embellishing natural light coming from right to left. And in keeping with that, the other thing I wanna do is something similar, but I wanna do a tighter vignette. Gonna try to do it somewhere between 35 millimeters and 50, really to show off even more of the detail of the kitchen, something close to that. I mean, as, as cool as that is, I don't need to show off as much of the beams as that does, but um, yeah, we'll try, try that at 35 and see how close we can get to 50 on that one. The next thing I would feel remiss if we didn't get is the living area. So if you come around here and look this way, I think it's cool, but there's not a ton that's grabbing me that's going, oh my gosh, you really have to show that off. Architecturally, we're already kind of covering our bases with that big wide shot that we're gonna do from here this direction. That being said, I do think one thing that I might wanna do is another tight vignette. And I'll give you an idea of what I'm thinking. Just like the other one, I might try to do this as close as I can to 35, but just for the sake of keeping it as is, that's 24. So I'm thinking we could probably even come back further, maybe about here and do something like that. The other one that I definitely wanna get is one from here shooting this direction. This shot is really going to show off the natural light coming from left to right. We'll have to be a little strategic on the positioning here, but what I'm thinking is something something like this. And now that I'm shooting this, 24 millimeter might be the sweet spot. Because see, ideally what I'd love to do is shoot here, get a sight line to the main bedroom, and even seeing a hint of the fireplace. The issue clearly is that we're missing a lot of the, um, the sliding glass doors, and they're probably getting too much kitchen and definitely getting too much wall. So we'll tilt shift or we'll shift on that one as well. Okay, now I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to get. That will do it for the initial walkthrough. Like I mentioned before, if you are not subscribed yet, make sure to do so because the tutorial videos of photographing and editing will be coming out very soon. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A Photo. And if you wanna check out some of my previous tutorials, definitely check out the video that's popping up on the screen now. If you made it all the way here to the end, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch. That'll do it for this video. We will see you on the next one.